Does corruption in the Philippines affect businesses for expats? I would say corruption generally is large scale. Um, the whole thing about farming with animal feeds, um, vaccines, um, uh, fertilizers, pesticides, etc. Doesn't matter what it is, it's being centralized. What's happening is they're pushing the price up. Companies like San Miguel own most of the companies in some way or another. So what happens is the price goes up. And why do you want the price up? It's not just about profiteering. Um, a lot of it is about centralization. Because what happens if your pork is more expensive than it is to get from Thailand and you're constantly trying to increase the imports, eventually you'll get to the point where nobody's actually farming. There's no, you know, there's no pork production. Um, you get to the point where people aren't farming crops. You're, you're getting to the point now where the coconuts aren't being produced. They're, they're getting too old. They're not re, um, reforesting. Um, a lot of things are cut down. It's not, you know, they're not planting as many things as they should be because they cut the profit margin so much. Um, the reason being is if you control the ports, you control the country. Because everything that goes through a port is taxed. Or not taxed. You know, if you've got the right power, you don't pay tax. Um, a lot of people get away with it in the Philippines. Not me and you, but people with influence. Now, what happens is, if you got um, these little kingdoms as such, because you remember people control towns, provinces, um, cities, islands, They're, they have a lot of influence in those areas. But if you start centralizing the real money, which is basically all the food coming into the country, etc., you're taking control of stuff that they've controlled for centuries. Um, because you're, they're no longer producing in the same quantities they used to. You control what's going out and in and influence all of the prices. Um, you're controlling profiteering. So that's where this is all heading. And that's why it's done that way, in my view. Um, and it's not just local politics. Uh, it's on a grander scale than that. You know, for example, Haiti. Haiti doesn't produce as much food as it used to. And it's not because people are lazy. It's because somebody in there with their pearls of wisdom went with an open uh, trade policy with the US. Open trade policy, now imports rise at 50% less at market sale price than the locals can produce it for. How does that benefit the local economy? It doesn't. Where I see it myself is that you take um, this farmer but it's not the farmer, remember, because this is the traders. These are not um, physic people that are physically producing the items. But their crop is being sold in that country because you have to read up on farming and stuff to understand how it gets from A to B and how the prices fluctuate from what the farmer gets to what people are selling them for. Um, but if you imagine um, you and me are taxpayers, um, we fund... Uh, things like the Haiti disaster where we spend billions all that money goes into this pot down here and this corporation this country um, is basically getting all we're, we're subsidizing trying to keep something afloat then a corporation comes in and produces rice that takes out that pot or it has a, an effect where the farms are no longer producing or reduce production because corporation wise somebody is benefiting sad state of being but it's going on everywhere um and that's just haiti it's not oh well, sorry that's africa everywhere um, and the philippines is no hasn't escaped it itself it's importing a lot of stuff but obviously central control benefit every time Central control is government. Central control is corruption. Now, for the average expat, this doesn't really affect you too much. Yes, your rice sack may go up by 50 pesos one week without any real explanation. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't affect you in the same way it does Filipino families. 
they would never hike the price of rice to a stupid level um, because when people have got nothing left to lose, they riot and overthrow a government. And it's India realized that when we had the last rice shortage, they stopped exporting. That's why Pakistan was complaining because they wanted more rice um, because they were aware that if their rice shortage got silly, the government would be overthrown without a doubt. So it's a balancing act, but they're pretty good at it. But at the same time, I would say that things have been running into decline for so long, um, the bubble will burst somewhere. So the corruption goes through everything. And it's all about central control, as I've said, um, because a lot of this central control moves it from local control, which is probably something that every government aims to do where it can, because if you've got a central re resource, it's a bit like the EU. Um, it, it robs money blind. It, it's, it's a gravy train for politicians. Um, it's... It's governments. Governments are like this. This is what governments do. Um, but on a local scale, if you're buying wine, it could be expensive because wine is a luxury product. Um, I know in Spain, I'm only paying like less than 50, 50 pesos a, a liter for good stuff. But in, in the Philippines, I was paying two and a half thousand pesos for a good bottle. And it might even taste like vinegar. It was like hit and miss because it's been sat in a port for the last two months, um, baking in the sun. That is a typical example of where corruption affects you. Now, if you set up a small business as a business owner in the Philippines, you're not a business owner because you can't own it. Um, same as property. You can't own it. Your wife can. Your business partners can. And, um, you just work your way around, um, keeping within the rules, keeping within the law, keeping within the regulations, but at the same time, you can get some control offshore. Uh, for example, with the call center industry, the money is not made in the country as such. Uh, the business is uh, outsourced. So, for example, if I have a contract with somebody and I choose to use a Philippine call center, the bit between me and the client is me offshore. The bit between the work being done in the Philippines and, and the client doesn't exist. It goes between me and the people in the Philippines. That is offshore. So as such, it's outside the boundaries. So that's, that's very difficult to um, source corruption in there. There's no way you can actually manipulate that because the, the venture doesn't exist in the Philippines. It doesn't exist um, in a physical form. Most things involve having a building. If you have a building, you find that people that will complain about corruption that own a bar or the um, own an internet cafe and pay extra fees for this and that. That is something that is very common, but at the same time, it doesn't mean you have to pay it. A lot of this stuff is inherited corruption. Um, what I mean is, it's like I was saying about the guy that was told by his partner's relative, give the guard 500 pesos and he'll sort out your, your um what do you call it, tourist visa for you every time you go to the um, immigration. Really is, he didn't have to do it because when he went the one time on his own, he didn't give the guard anything he just processed it himself. And all he did was save 500 pesos. It was inherited corruption because that person before believed that was what worked. Because maybe 20 years ago, somebody needed to grease the wheels and that had gone through all these people and no point is anybody challenged it. And that's what I'm saying. Um, prime example, we had, when we had the internet calf, there was some, I think it was the internet calf. What was it a call center? We had somebody come with a fire extinguisher. Uh, we had the fire officer come up, we need the fire permit. So they come out, did the fire permit, and says, gotta have an extinguisher. Um, and we're like, okay, 
and off they went. Within 15 minutes, we had a phone call with somebody telling us that they had a special deal with a local fire officer and they can sell us this at X. First thing I noticed is the price of the extinguisher is about double of its normal value. So I just said, I'll have a think about it. Um, basically, I, th I think in the end we bought our own extinguishers or I didn't haggle the price down. Uh, but either way, we got the extinguishers, we're legally compliant, but we didn't do it the way they wanted to. They wanted us to pay excess um, to get it done straight away. Um, and that's how a lot of it works because if you challenge it, a lot of time people will back down because they know it's not legal. And I've, I've had people, I've said to the face, this is wrong, this is wrong. And they'll just laugh it off as if like, oh, I've been caught, oh, I'm a naughty boy. And I just didn't pay it because they back down because all they're doing is trying their luck. And I would say that that is pretty much it. As long as you're working within the law, nobody really bothers you. I know people that are operating on the borderline, um, and that's why they get bothered. Um, it's not that I socialize with them. What it is, is I hear them complaining about stuff that has happened to them. And I'm thinking, well, there's only one person to blame, it's yourself. Because I don't pay any of this stuff. I've never had any hassles. Um, but I, I think if you're making yourself prone to it by just paying it all the time, um, everybody gets to know that you're an easy touch. And that's where you get the real problems because they realize that they can do it when they want. Um, like it or not, it's where you, where you need to take control of it yourself and remove the corruption. Um, and a lot of it, you would never get into corruption as long as you were doing everything legal in the first place. It's because people try to push and see how far they can go and eventually drop into something they shouldn't be doing. And at that point, you're bringing risk to yourself and the people around you as that corruption gets to a level that gets stupid. Um, all I can advise is don't get into it. All right, thanks for watching.